so yesterday we had the big summit in Singapore. Uh, Donald Trump, Kim Jong Un meeting, and it was historic, and it was huge. It was all those things that you're supposed to say repeatedly over and yep. over again. Uh, look, it was big. Uh, we had not had a US president sit down with a, the leader of North Korea uh, since there was a North Korea. Mm -hmm. And so uh, by that measure, it is historic. Let's acknowledge that. I would follow that by saying that if any US president had wanted to, he could have set it up in two or three days. There are yep. probably reasons why they chose not to. That said, this is at least ostensibly in the pursuit of peace, which is uh, my goal in this whole thing. And so uh, they met, they uh, had a photo op, uh, they walked around, and then they signed a document, which we're gonna turn to. But what is your um, what is your initial reaction to the summit now that it has actually happened, it is done, we're moving on? I, I love that um, we have to say all this, that it's that it's really historic and this is a step towards, because you know otherwise we'll be accused of, of supporting war with North Korea, which, which is, is ridiculous. Yeah, and you know, but at the same time, like everybody who has paid any attention to North Korea or how they conduct themselves um, knows that this is a huge win for North Korea and does absolutely nothing for the United States except mm. flatters Trump. Let's talk about this agreement. Uh, we're gonna bring up this graphic, it summarizes four of the main points there. Understand that this entire agreement was one and a quarter pages long uh, and includes very little in terms of details or future steps. But the overall goals is that we want to push for peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, they want to build a lasting and stable peace regime. Um, they are reaffirming uh, denuclearization uh, on the Korean Peninsula, and then there's also a reference to uh, to recovering POW MIA remains, which is an ongoing concern coming out of the Korean War and some of the conflict ever since then. All of this is good, by the way. Um, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite North Korean denuclearization memo, uh, but I would put it in the top five or six over the past two decades. Sure. Um, and by the way, look, I, I understand that I'm being snarky, and you're not supposed to. Um, there is not a there is not a thing in this letter that North Korea has not repeatedly agreed to in past negotiations with yeah. the US. So I want you to understand that. We're not gonna, look, yes, we want peace. I hope that Donald Trump is successful, and I hope that all of this works perfectly for reasons that aren't understandable at this point. But I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend that they have not already agreed to all of this stuff in the past. It's, I, I would say this is almost worse than anything they've agreed to in the past because I mean, I remember that they uh, like blew up cooling towers at the very least. I mm -hmm. think under Obama, I, I want to say, mm -hmm. um, and then they just rebuilt them. And yeah. and there was no. I mean, in this case, they're just they're. Just, it makes me think of uh, when those conversations leaked between uh, Donald Trump and the president of Mexico, mm -hmm. where he asked, Nie uh, I think it's Nieto, um, to uh, he he basically begged him to say, just just say you're going to pay for the wall. We'll yeah. figure it out later. But say you're going to pay for it because it'll make me look good. Yeah. This seems kind of like obviously the same thing. Say that you're going to denuclearize. We'll figure it out. You don't. You know, we don't know how many yeah. nukes you really have, or where your, uh, you know, nuclear bases are, or what you're going to do with the information you already have. Or the, it's yeah, yeah. It, Look, I, ho I hope I hope that this meant, like nobody can currently explain why it is that Kim Jong Un has turned in one year to suddenly being the biggest fan of peace in the world. But I hope that it's I hope that it's genuine. I hope that it's genuine. But I do think it's odd that the right is believes that this document, this one and a quarter page document, is literally the greatest piece of diplomacy that's ever been conducted. Donald Trump is the greatest president ever, being compared to Lincoln, should mm -hmm. get the Nobel Peace Prize. When the Iran nuclear accord, which was negotiated over the course of 10 years with multiple countries, literally the greatest experts on denuclearization and verification of denuclearization in the entire world going in and verifying at the actual locations internationally, everybody agrees that they were abiding by it. Even the Trump administration had to begrudgingly agree that they were abiding by it. That was toilet paper, and that's why mm -hmm. they shredded it. But this, which has no details about how they're gonna actually do it or what the timetable is, it deserves a Nobel Prize. And again, I hope that they abide by it. I hope that they do. But there is some weird stuff going on right now in political commentary in regard to this. People are so desperate to say something positive about Trump, and the right is so desperate to give him a participation trophy for showing up to a meeting that any US president could have had on a moment's notice if they wanted it. It is odd to me how people are treating this. And, and also on that note that any president can have done this, there are obvious reasons that presidents haven't done this, and it's that 
meeting with the United States is a sign of legitimacy, and mm -hmm. that is the only real leverage we have outside of military force. Mm -hmm. And Trump gave it away as part of the meeting. Like he, we didn't get anything in exchange for giving away that leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Um, now, overall, the question is, does this reduce the chance of some sort of conflict between the US and North Korea? And I would say it, it, probably, probably, yeah, which but, is good. But uh, here's the thing, the only imminent threat of some sort of uh, conflict between the US and North Korea was the threats coming from the Trump administration in regard to North Korea, and they're talking about mm -hmm. a, a bloody nose attack. Yeah. So that threat has been reduced, which means that Donald Trump has done something quite unique. He has established a peace deal with himself. Yes. Because he has reduced the yes. chance that he himself will attack them. That's that's, pr that's which is good. Pretty perfectly said. Yeah. Thank you. Because I mean, what North Korea? Look, I've, I've, I say this every time North Korea comes up is that they've never been a um, uh, maybe legitimate threat is not quite the right word, but they've never been a threat that it, it will actually uh, you know bomb anyone or they have no you know if they bombed anyone or if they they sent nukes. Um, they would get invaded immediately, and mm. the regime would be over. Kim would be deposed. Now, Kim has essentially uh, wiped the slate clean on all the human rights abuses, on all the all the labor camps, all the death camps, um, and he gets to be like just an upstanding member of the international community. Thanks yeah. to Trump. Yeah. Which, and again, like I'm not like maybe maybe that's necessary. You know, as they say, you don't make peace with your with your allies, but it is a big thing, and we do have to at the very least sure. acknowledge it. Is Donald Trump serious about peace? Or is he interested in a photo op and looking like he had a win? Um, I wanna read a couple of quotes. Uh, the first is uh, Donald Trump and how he argued to Kim uh, that we need peace. He said, uh, in terms of building a nuclear arsenal, instead of doing that, you could have the best hotels in the world right there. Think of it from a real estate perspective, which is uh, shocking and also yeah. Obviously, how Donald Trump would communicate right, yeah, about the possibility of peace. It's the only thing that makes sense to him is, is like, well, how do we bring world peace? Hotels yeah. with my name on them. Why wouldn't it be? And then also, and I understand when you're trying to do this sort of peace deal, you're trying to broker peace between two countries that barely talk and barely have talked for decades, you're not gonna be able to win on everything. But his willingness to jettison human rights concerns oh, yeah. is scary. It is scary, and I'm not gonna lie to you. So here are a few things that he said about the leader of North Korea. Uh, talking with Greta Van Susteren, Trump said, he's a rough guy, he has to be a rough guy, or he has been a rough person, but we got along very well. He's smart, loves his people, he loves his country. She responded, but he's starved them, he's been brutal to them, he still loves his people. Trump said, look, he's doing what he's seen done, if you look at it, but I really have to go by today and by yesterday and by a couple of weeks ago, because that's really when this whole thing started. He loves his people. I'm sure on some level he likes his people, but that has not stopped him from starving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them, let alone the summary executions and the death camps and all of that. The forced labor, those seem significant. I mean, Donald Trump doesn't really seem like a guy who cares that much about people in other countries, much less despots who are, are you know, killing them and enslaving them. and. and I like again. I, I said this before the break, but but realistically, Trump is wiping the slate clean for Kim Jong Un's, mm -hmm. and not just um, uh, Kim Jong Un, but but his father and and grandfather's horrible human rights atrocities that have gone on for decades. decades. Um, and you know, in exchange for a photo op and uh, you know good coverage, he's he's just saying, yeah, yeah, he's fine. This all started a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I mean, that's I the most disappointing thing about all of this, I think. Well, if you said it just a couple of weeks ago, that takes out a warm beer uh, out of the, the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, he also said to, uh, from a source at CNN, uh, he said he's very talented uh, and he cited Kim's ability to take over a situation like he did at 26 years of age and run it and run it tough. Oh. It is a family based dictatorship. He didn't like step up and deliver, it was passed on to him as it has been in the past to his predecessor. And to run it tough, I guess he's executed family members, that's pretty mm -hmm. tough, tough love, I guess I would say. Mm. And again, some of this stuff you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get everything you want when you're trying to get peace. But to pretend that this guy has not done what he's done seems disingenuous. 
I mean, also he's he's talking about it like it's a mom and pop shop family business that like, wow, he really stepped up and took over and continued to execute and enslave and imprison. Yeah. Um, I did see one one really good tweet about this, which was um, the leader of their country with the largest prison population in the world just met with uh, Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. That is a very good point. Uh, and by the way, in terms of uh, what we got and what we gave, uh, and in terms of how serious Trump is, and how serious that letter that we, we talked about was, um, Ryan Strook reports President Trump says he got North Korea to commit to destroying a major missile testing site, but quote, we didn't put it in the agreement because we didn't have time. The typing is hard, I guess. Um, but I would say that while there's no timeline for most of the things that are supposedly going to be done as a result of this, I do think that he can get this one done quickly. I think they can dismantle that nuclear testing site considering that it blew up last year. <laughs> 200 people died yeah. when it collapsed. Yeah. And so it's a little bit easier to shut it down, I suppose, when it blew up. Uh, by the way, we also gave up, uh, we will no longer be doing joint uh, military exercises with South Korea, which has been a long time goal of North Korea. Um, as far as I know, South Korea was not actually uh, talked to about that nor, change. Nor was the US military in South Korea. Nor was the US military. Yeah. Um, and look, again, maybe this is something you have to do, but these are pretty significant concessions that we're giving for an already exploded nuclear test site. And I, I hope, I hope that it's gonna work out. I hope it's gonna work out. That is what I will leave you with today. We'll see. We'll see.